Cool. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Mark. Great for the update. Hey, yeah, have a good one. Good to hear it. All right. We're going to keep them coming, keep hearing from users and thinking about different ways the stack might come together. And the next company we're hearing from is Live Person. Now, they are a very brave company. They're a SaaS company that powers a lot of the online chat that you may experience out there in the wild with different retailers. They're uh, powering a lot of that live chat. And the reason why I say they're brave is because they started with Diablo, which for those of you who've been around a while, that was, that was pretty early days. We've come a long way since Diablo. And to tell us about where they are and what they're doing with OpenStack and beyond, we've got the Director of Cloud Engineering from LivePerson, Kobe Holzer. Welcome, Kobe. Thanks. All right, so tell us about your OpenStack infrastructure. You've been running it for a while. What's the latest? Sure. At LivePerson, we started with the OpenStack something like uh, four and a half years ago. We started with the Diablo release, like you mentioned. And now we are in the process of upgrading to the killer release. In terms of scale, we read something like 8,000 instances running on more than, uh, more than uh, uh, 20,000 physical cores, wow. spread on seven different data centers around the globe. Very cool. So what, what are you doing in, uh, in terms of containers? We got a little bit of a container theme going. I'm guessing you might have some, some updates there. Sure. So four and a half years ago, when we started with the OpenStack, it's not the only thing that we started with. We also uh, started uh, rewriting our entire service, migrating it from one big monolithic service to 150 microservices. So this was a long and brave journey that LivePerson took, and OpenStack enabled it. So in terms of containers, mm -hmm. now that our service is based on 150 microservices, it's making perfect sense for us to migrate most of those services to containers. Okay. And we chose Docker and Kubernetes, which are the most fit for us for our use case. And uh, we started uh, with our continuous integration and delivery pipeline understanding that we want to support best our software developers mm -hmm. in the process, adopting the new technology, and allowing them to have a fast and smooth pipeline up to production. OK, so CI, CD, that's really a, a big trend these days. People trying to move faster. Microservices enable that. And then you've got Docker and Kubernetes. So you seem to be, be hitting all the, the, the high points on the, on the cutting edge. Um, so you're running this on your existing OpenStack cloud, so I assume you're running that in virtual machines. Is that the approach? Yeah, so having OpenStack-powered infrastructure, it makes the most sense, of, most sense for us and giving us the fastest path to production, mm -hmm. just deploying Kubernetes clusters using Puppet on OpenStack on large VMs. And uh, it's kind of like having one stop shop for all our use cases, mm -hmm. bare metal instances and containers. Looking forward, we do plan to adopt more technologies like uh, CoreOS or Atomic, okay. and even open the questions of uh, VMs versus physical. Okay. And if physical, we're going to go with Ironic. OK, another, another lead for the Ironic team here. Yeah. So, so what's next? For OK, you? so two major moves for us. One of them is going full scale, obviously, with Kubernetes to production. Already have some, inst some services in production, and, and in the next three quarters, we're going to go full scale. And the other one is leveraging the opportunity that Kubernetes presents to us and explore the option of using public clouds, enabling our organization for a hybrid approach. OK, so these, this new, new set of tools kind of helps create some compatibility options that open up more public cloud choices. Exactly. For you. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Kobe. Thank you very much. Thank you.